All right, so let's uh, let's jump into it. So um, so far, I created a new app from all the way scratch here, and I created a SRC folder, a source folder, and I dropped in my FTSX here, in here. And uh, all I've done inside this file is just to create a safe area view where I'm applying Flex1 styling, and then I created some text here that says carousel. Okay, so this is my starting point, and now what I would like to do is to jump inside source here and then create my component. And I'm just going to create a new file here, and I'm going to call it carousel. Alright, closing that one again, jumping in here, this is my carousel component, and uh, first of all, I'm just going to render out a view here, so let's just render that one out, and uh, now I need to think about what kind of props do I want to serve. So in my mind, we're going to need some images for this carousel, and these images are going to be a an array of strings. It could be an array of strings. It's going to be for my case. So I'm just going to have a bunch of strings with an URL for each image inside this array. All right. So I'm going to define props and then pass it in here as my generic. Okay. Now that's actually all I need in terms of props. I could expand it, but uh, for the our very simple use case, this will suffice. Okay, so now we can jump in here, we can destructure it out, and then we can jump down here. All right, so uh, in addition to having a wrapping view here, we are going to need a animated view. And uh, for that, I'm going to import animated from React Native, and then I'm going to access the dot view inside animated here. So I have an animated view. All right. And inside my animated view, I'm going to render out my images. So each image, I'm going to render out a image component. And for this image component, I'm going to set the source to whatever this image is. So remember, my images is a an array of strings. So I can put in that URL in here when I map over it. All right, now let's jump down here and define some styles because I want to actually show something on the phone. So we have something to look at. So uh, for the image, I'm gonna put resize mode cover for now, and I'm gonna put the height to 500. And the width, I'm going to uh, use the dimensions uh, import here. And then I'm going to say get, and then grab the screen, and then choose the width here. So now I'll get the width of the screen here. Now we can go to the image component, and we can do for styles, we can do styles that image. And that's going to pass in that styling there, all right? So, so, so far we're not rendering this carousel, so if I jump back to FTSX and I render out that carousel here, oh, wrong import. So let me just do a manual one. So import carousel from carousel, then we can render it out here. And we need to remember we need these images in here. For now, I'll just put an empty array, but I actually want to put some values in here. So uh, for that, I am going to copy paste in this image array here. So I'm actually going to go outside this component, just put it up here. And then instead of an empty array, I'm going to put in the images here. Okay. So now you can see over here, I'm getting some images and I'm also getting a warning that I forgot to pass a key. So let's pass in a key here. It's going to be my image URL. It should be unique for our case. Okay, cool. 
Now, um, let's uh, since we added the styling on the image, let's add some styling of this container view. So for this, I'm gonna call it uh, this container, right? And uh, for now, I'm just gonna put the flex direction to row. That should be all that we need. So I'm gonna be passing in an array here. And the reason for that is I want to apply some additional styling because I want to animate it later on. Okay. So inside this array, we just put the container styles. And now it looks like this. Okay. That's great. Um, now, what we can do is uh, start animating these images. Okay. For that, I'm going to create a handle animation function. And I'm also going to need to add some state. And I am going to add it inside a ref. So use ref from React. In here, I'm going to pass a new animated dot value. And I'm going to put it to zero initially. Okay. So now, when we want to handle our animation, um, Actually, we need also a use state hook here because we need some way of figuring out what image we're showing. So I'm going to define a use state hook here, call it current image. And I'm going to set it to zero as well in the beginning. OK, now for the handle animation part, we want to increase our current image index. So I'm going to take the current image and then plus it to one. Okay. And then I'm going to set the new current image to new current image. Okay. So far, nothing is happening. We're not even calling this function. So everything is good. Now let's try to wrap this component in a fragment and then put a button here. that says move and when we press on it we want to call handle animation now when i click this nothing's happening that's expected we're just increasing an index which we're not doing anything with so that makes sense now in addition to updating this index i want to do some animation and for that i need to access animated and in here, I'm going to do a spring animation. So I'm going to access dot spring. And in here, I can pass in my animation value. And this is inside my ref. So I need to type out the ref and then access current. And now I can pass in some configuration. And the first part is going to be what value do I want to animate, animate to? And for my case, it's going to be minus dimensions. And once again, I'm grabbing the width of the screen. And then I'm going to times it with the new current image value here. And I'm going to set use native driver to true. And one thing that's very important is I also need to start it, the animation. So now when I click move here, still nothing is happening. And that's because we still need to apply the animation to our style tag down here. So that's going to be the last part. Remember in this earlier I said I need an array here. That's because now I'm going to apply that additional inline styling here. So I'm going to put in an object. And I'm going to put in transform here. And I'm going to put an array. And inside this array, I'm going to choose that property that I want to animate. So in my case, I want to move the image to on the x-axis. So I'm just going to pass in translate x as my only object in here. And now I can just do point at my animation, which is going to be animation.current. It's important that we have this dot current here uh, whenever we are working with this ref. OK, cool. So now our image disappeared. All right, so our image had disappeared because our new current image variable here was a very 
high value. So after doing a refresh, it's back to zero and we can see the image. Now if I click this move, you can see we are scrolling to the next image. And if I click again, it will go to the third one. If I click again, we'll have a white screen here. So we need to solve this problem where we, it keeps on going, it keeps increasing the index. Now for us, that's a pretty simple change because when we handle our animation here, we can just check what the new current image value will be, right? And if this one is equal to the amount of images that we have, we know that, or even if it's bigger or equal, whatever, uh, we know that it's getting too large and we need to set it back to zero. So if I go back here, reload, click move, you can see I jump back to the start whenever I get to the third image. And uh, this might not be the effect you want for a carousel. Like you might want to have the effect of it keep on uh, going to the right. and. Uh, that's totally fair. You can change the logic a little bit here and get that effect. But for now, we're going to leave it like this. Okay, so, so far, so good. Now, the next two things that I want to look into is adding the indicator, indicators, and also adding the automatic um, shuffling of images, or just automatically moving the cursor around so we don't have to press this button. All right, so let's get to the part where we add the indicators. So um, if you go down here, below our wrapping, or actually inside this view, we can add our indicators view here. So let's add a view here. And then inside this view, let's once again map over the images. And then for each image we have, we want to render another view. All right, so here we need to add a key. At this time we can use the image URL so I'm going to be making a new key here by combining image and then the index. Okay, cool. Now let's first of all add some styling to this indicator container here. So let's jump down here and uh, all one indicator container. Let's give it a position absolute since we want it to overlap on the image. And then let's do flex direction row. Let's put stuff in the middle. And let's once again use the whole width of the screen. And instead of repeating myself three times here for this one, I'm going to make a new variable, just going to call it max width. And uh, I'm going to find it at the top here. Now I can go here and then do max width. Okay. And now I can do bottom 10 because I want it to be 10 pixels over the image and then just set index 2 just to be sure that it's actually on top. So now I can do styles dot container. Oh indicator container. Cool. Now we just still don't see anything yet because these views are in fact not styled so it doesn't show anything. But uh, what we can do is we can add some styles for the uh, indicator themselves, right? So 
So if you go down here, indicator, and then add in some styles here. So I'm gonna have a width and a height of 15. I'm gonna have a border radius, half of that, which is gonna be seven and a half. And then background color, I'm gonna just don't choose anything actually. So let's just don't write transparent, let's just leave it like that. Watercolor, I'm gonna put it to white. And the border width, I'm gonna put it to one. Now I'm also gonna add a little bit of margin just to position it right. Okay, so now you can see we get these dots down here. And uh, I also want to have a little bit of different styling for whenever we have an active indicator. And for that, I want a fill color of white. So I'm gonna add an additional style here, active indicator. So if you go up here to a view, instead of just passing in these styles, I'm gonna pass in an array because I want to add additional styles. So if our index is equal to the current image, then we also want to add styles.active indicator. Otherwise, we are not going to pass anything, so I'm going to put in undefined. Okay, so right now the first one is active. If I click move, it switches to the second one. So that is working just great. Okay, so now for the last part, which is going to be automatically making this carousel move. And for that, we can basically remove this button here and then call this handle animation differently. And uh, to make this uh, easier, I am gonna copy paste in a little hook uh, that's gonna help us. Um, hold on. Right, so for the next part, we're gonna do this uh, animation automatically. So we're gonna need to set up an interval um, that calls this handle animation every, say, two seconds or five seconds, whatever we would like. But uh, doing uh, intervals in React with hooks is a little bit uh, unlogical or a little bit, how do you say, a little bit tedious. So I'm gonna open up this page called usehooks.ts. So here we have some TypeScript React hook snippets. And the one I'm interested in is gonna be this use interval here. So if I click on that one, we should get the code here. We can mark that and then copy it into our project. And I'm gonna call it use interval interval as well here, that TS, copy it in, save it. And then in our carousel, I'm gonna be pulling that hook in. So at the top here, I'm gonna do use interval. And use interval takes in a callback function. And my callback function is gonna be handle animation. And then it takes in a second parameter, which is going to be the delay. So I'm going to say every two seconds, 2000 milliseconds, I want to call this handle animation. And uh, if you close this one down and save this, we should be golden actually. But uh, yeah, let's see. It looks like uh, it's working as expected. Now, if I increase this value, to 5,000. Um, it should take a little longer. And uh, yeah, it seems like it is in fact taking longer, so that's working. Okay, that is all.